Hello, and welcome to your next lecture on conditionals. So last time we talked about if statements and we also talked about else's which go with if statements and run when the if statement is not true. However, there's one extra intermediary step that we can add there and that's called the L if. L if is short for else if and it basically gives us another option to check whether something is true or false in this progression of if and else statements. So basically it would go if some Boolean expression and if that's not true, then instead of just executing the else statement, instead we can check if something else, a different Boolean is true. So the way that this would run would be if Boolean statement, elif, another Boolean statement. And finally, if neither of those are true, we will finally run our else suite. Now keep in mind that the elif only executes if the original Boolean statement for the if statement is false and the else only executes if none of the if or elif are true. All right, let's do a concrete example so you can see all of that in practice. So let's say that you're gonna go fly somewhere, it's finally safe, and we're gonna say bag weight equals 75 pounds. You had to bring a lot of things on your vacation. Well, let's use an if, elif, else to decide how much extra you may have to pay for your heavy luggage. The airline has a policy where if your bag is over 50 pounds that you have to pay 50 extra dollars and if it's over 100 pounds you have to pay an extra hundred dollars while if your bag is less than that you don't have to pay anything let's go ahead and use if elif and else to check how much you're going to have to pay so first we'll say if bag weight is greater than 100 pounds so if it's super heavy print that'll be a hundred dollars extra. Now, if your bag is not greater than a hundred pounds, you still might have to pay extra. And that would be if your bag is greater than 50 pounds. So let's go ahead and had, add an L if bag weight is greater than 50 pounds. Print that will be $50 extra. Now remember, the elif will not execute if the if statement is true. So if your bag is really, really heavy, over 100 pounds, it'll just print out that'll be $100 extra and none of the elif or else's will run. However, if the if statement is false, then it'll move on to the elif and check whether this is true. If this is true, then you'll have to pay 50 extra dollars. Finally, we need to have a case where your bag is actually underweight and therefore you don't have to pay anything else. So we'll say else, print, have a nice flight. So you can tell that if your bag is not greater than 100 pounds, nor is it greater than 50 pounds, then you don't actually have to pay anything. All right, let's go ahead and run our code. Python 3, conditionals, Six blank dot py. Beautiful. So remember, our bag is 75 pounds. Take a second to think through the code and guess what the output will be. All right, so our output of our program said that'll be $50 extra, which makes sense because when we checked, we said if bag weight is greater than 100, it's not, it's only 75. So then our elif executed and it said is bag weight greater than 50 and it is, so it printed out that'll be 50 extra and our else suite never had to print. All right, let's do one more. We're gonna say savings equals $10 thousand dollars. So we are working at a bank and we are trying to write some code to check which rewards tier a member is in. Let's say if you have more than a hundred thousand dollars in your savings that you're platinum tier, if you have more than fifty thousand dollars you're gold tier, and if you have anything less than that you're not actually in a rewards tier at all. So let's go ahead and put that into an if statement. First let's check if they're in the platinum tier. We'll say if savings is greater than 100,000, print congrats, you're in the platinum tier. Put an exclamation point. Now, if they're not qualified for the platinum tier, they still might qualify for the gold tier. So we're gonna have an LF. We're gonna say LF savings is greater than 50,000, 
print congrats you're in the gold tier beautiful now if they're not in either tier meaning their savings is less than fifty thousand dollars then we're going to put an else statement print welcome to python bank because they are not in any rewards tier at all all right let's go ahead and comment out our previous code save and let's run this code so remember our current savings is ten thousand dollars think a little bit about what you think the output will be all right so since our savings was low we didn't have the if suite execute nor the elif suite but the else suite did execute because both of those booleans that we checked in the if and the elif were false and it went ahead and printed welcome to python bank Let's try this one more time, but instead of 10,000, we will have $110,000. Again, think through what you think the output will be. All right, let's run this. Beautiful, so finally we have qualified for the platinum tier. You can see this because our savings was greater than $100,000, therefore the if suite executed, the elif and the else didn't need to at all. So, so far, we've been checking pretty simple things. We've just been checking a single Boolean to see whether it's true or false, and then executing our code based on that result. However, we have the chance to check multiple Booleans if we would like to. The way that we do this is with the AND and the OR operator. As the name implies, AND checks if two things are true. So if there's two Boolean statements, it checks that both of them are true. And we can see what happens when we have different combinations of true and false Booleans. So remember, we're looking at two different Booleans. If both of them are true, Boolean 1 and Boolean 2 is true because both of them are true. If 1 is true and 2 is false, then AND Boolean 1 and Boolean 2 will evaluate to false. If Boolean 1 is false and Boolean 2 is true, it evaluates to false. And finally, if both of them are false, Boolean in 1 and Boolean 2 is also false, since it's not true that both of them are true. On the other hand, we have OR. OR checks whether either or both of our conditions are true. So you could think about if it is Monday or it is Wednesday, go to the Keck Center, which is where you teach. If it's Monday or if it's Wednesday, either way, I would like to go to the Keck Center. Or you can think of an example like if I am hungry or if my friends are there, I would like to go to Bruxy. So if my friends are there, I want to go. If I'm hungry, I want to go. And actually, if I'm hungry and my friends are there, I would like to go. You can see this reflected in this table. For the OR operator, when you're comparing two Booleans, if both are true, then the OR, Boolean 1 or Boolean 2 is true. If 1 is true and 2 is false, then Boolean 1 or Boolean 2 is true. If 1 is false and 2 is true, Boolean 1 or Boolean 2 is true. And finally, the only time when this would be false is if both Boolean 1 and Boolean 2 are false. But it's probably easier to see examples in Python, so let's go ahead and do one. We're going to create two variables, person kind, which tells you whether a person you just met is kind, and we'll say true true there we go oh and then we'll have another variable called person fun equals true so let's write an if statement using the and operator to check if someone is both kind and fun and if they are let's ask them to be friends so we'll say if person kind and person fun print would you like to be my friend? So when we run our code, if person kind is true and person fun is true, then person kind and person fun will be true and our if suite will run. However, if either of them are false, so they're not kind or they're not fun, then this Boolean will evaluate to false and our if suite won't run at all. All right, so we know that the person is kind and fun, so think for a second what you think the output of this code will be. Awesome, so our code outputted, would you like to be my friend, because both person kind and person fun were true. Now, let's say that we found someone who was kind, but they weren't so fun. 
Let's see what our code outputs then. Awesome. So we actually have no output because our if suite never ran because person fun is false. All right, but let's say you're maybe not so picky about your friends. Let's say that instead of requiring friends to be both kind and fun, you'll take a friend if they're kind or if they're fun. They could be both, but they don't have to be. We can change our code and just change one word. We can change and to or. And now we will be friends with people who are kind but not fun, people who are fun but not kind, and people who are both fun and kind as before. So let's go ahead and comment this out and then run this. So now we're checking if people are kind or fun. Right now they're both, so let's check and see if we wanna be friends. Okay, it does say we wanna be friends because this person is both kind and fun. But again, let's say that we found someone who's kind but uh, not so fun. Let's go ahead and run our code now and take a second to think what you think the output will be. All right, so we've still asked this person to be friends even though they're not fun. Let's see what happens if they're not fun and they're not kind. Go ahead and save and run. So this time we got no output and that's because this person is not kind and not fun so we do not wanna be friends with them. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of a better look at the difference between and and or. All right, before we move on, let's take a look at what happens when we use and or or when we have those Boolean comparisons rather than just two variables that are true or false. So we're gonna have a variable called num and set it equal to 17. Then for some reason, we would like to check whether this number is positive, in other words, it's greater than zero, and whether it goes into 100 evenly. So let's start with greater than zero. We'll say if num greater than zero. Easy enough. Now we want both of these things to be true, so we're gonna use an and operator. And the next condition that we wanna check is that 17 goes into 100 evenly. We can check that with our modulo operator by saying 100 modulo num. So notice that we have two Boolean comparisons, one on either side of and. We have num greater than zero and 100 modulo num equals zero. Both these things are Boolean comparisons and each will evaluate to true or false and then we'll combine them with and and if both of them are true, we'll run our if suite. In our if suite, we'll just go ahead and print out this is a very specific kind of number. Awesome, so let's go ahead and run this. Now think in your head really quickly whether you think 17 is greater than zero and whether 17 goes into 100 evenly. So let's go ahead and run this and nothing outputted. That's because while 17 is greater than zero and this part is true, 17 does not go into 100 evenly so this part was not true. Let's change it to a number that would satisfy these conditions. How about 10? All right, let's go ahead and run. Awesome, so this time our if suite did execute because 10 is greater than zero and 10 goes into 100 with nothing left over. All right, last but not least, I would like to talk about conditional expressions. Conditional expressions are just kind of a shorthand way to write simple if else statements. So for instance, say we had a variable a that was either true or false. We could say if a, print okay, else print no. A conditional expression is just a different way to write that exact same code in one line. For instance, print okay if a, else print no. You can see that these parts are all the same as we had in our original if statement, it's just a little bit pithier. So let's go ahead and go to Adam and look at how we can convert some simple if else statements into conditional expressions. All right, so here I have the if statement, if name equals Chelsea, print you're the professor, else print you're a student. Let's go ahead and change this into a conditional expression. And I'm actually just gonna go ahead and highlight copy and paste parts so you can see where each part of the if statement goes into each part of the conditional expression. So the first thing that we start out with in a conditional expression is what we want to happen if our condition is true. In our case, we want to print out you're the professor. So I'm gonna say print you're the professor, 
Then we have our if statement. And hopefully this makes sense with like the way that we speak English. We might say, oh, go get some eggs if you're out later today. Similar thing. In Python, we'd say, if you're out later today, go get some eggs. But a conditional statement just reverses the order of that. So we're going to go ahead and copy this and say, if name equals Chelsea. So print, you're the professor, if name equals Chelsea. And then we're going to have our else statement. And we'll say else. And then what we want to happen if the else suite would have run, which in this case is print you're a student. These two pieces of code are functionally equivalent. And let's go ahead and test that out by running just this code. I'm going to comment out what's below here. All right, so what we should see is the same thing happen twice because this if statement is equivalent to this conditional expression. So let's go ahead and run our code and you can see we printed out you're the professor twice. Let's just make sure it works when things are false. We'll put again, James here and run again. And again, it printed you're the student both for our traditional if statement and for our conditional expression. All right, let's do one more. So we have here day equals Sunday and we're checking if day is Sunday or day equals Saturday. Print ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. Otherwise, if it's a Monday through Friday, print work, 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 work. So let's take this, copy and paste it, and make it into a conditional expression. Remember, the first part of a conditional expression is what we want to happen if our condition is true. In this case, that's print, ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. So we'll copy and paste that there. And then we're going to put our if and our Boolean. So we're going to say if day equals Sunday or day equals Saturday. And then we have else and what we want to happen if our else suite would have run. In this case, it's print, work, work, work. All right, so again, these two pieces of code should be functionally equivalent, and let's run our code to make sure they are. All right, we'll go ahead and run, and in this case, since we said day equals Sunday, we've printed out, ladies and gentlemen, the weekend twice in a row. Now let's check what happens if it's Tuesday, save, run, and we've printed out work, 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 twice in a row because again, this if statement and else is the same as this conditional expression. Now, conditional statements can get much more complex than this and you can feel free to explore that on your own. We'll also see them a little bit later when we do list comprehension, but for now, being able to translate a simple if else statement into a conditional expression is all that you need to know how to do. And just a reminder that these two things are equivalent, which means if it's easier for you to produce or understand the if statement like this, it's generally okay for you to do it that way. I'm showing you a quick, clean alternative, but it doesn't mean that you have to use it, especially if that's not what comes to mind when you're writing your code. Remember, the most important thing is that we have code that functions the way we want it to. Then we go ahead and focus on readability and elegance. All right, that is all that I have for you. I will see you next time.